Welcome back to Jason Bowman Loves Cars. I'm Jason Bowman, and I love cars. Today I'm going to tell you my story of the Porsche 924. The Porsche 924 is one of those cars that I didn't actually know a lot about before this project. The 924 was well represented in my toys as a child in the 80s. Slot car sets, Hot Wheels cars, and radio controlled cars. Fast forward to 2021 and the full size 924s are quite the bargain. The Porsche 924 was a sports car produced by Audi in for Porsche AG of Germany from 1976 to 1988. The 2 plus 2 coupe was intended to replace the Porsche 914 as the company's entry level model. Although the Big Brother 928 was designed first, the 924 is the first production Porsche to have a front engine with rear wheel drive. It was also the first Porsche to be offered with an automatic transmission. The 924 made its to the 924 made its to be the 924 made its to the 924 made its debut in November 1975. The car enthusiasts loved it, buying up 150,000 of them between 1976 and 1988. The Porsche 944 was introduced to the US market in 1983. The 944 was intended to replace the 924, but the 924 production continued until 1988. The 924 project was a joint venture between Volkswagen and Porsche. Something I never realized was Porsche did and does a lot of consulting for other car companies. Volkswagen intended the 924 to be their flagship sports car and was internally referred to as Project 425. Porsche intended the 924 to replace the 914 as their entry-level sports car. Porsche was contracted to develop the new sports car with a pre-existing VW Audi inline four-cylinder engine. Porsche chose a rear-wheel drive layout with the rear-mounted transaxle. This layout gave the 924 4852 front rear weight balance, which is ideal for a sports car. The 1973 oil crisis put Volkswagen's plans for a rear-wheel drive sports car on hold. Volkswagen decided to move forward with the cheaper, more practical golf-based front-wheel drive Scirocco model instead. VW scrapped Project 425. Porsche still needed a replacement for the 914, so they made a deal with Volkswagen to buy the design back. The specifics of the deal were that Porsche would subcontract assembly to the 924 to Volkswagen, which would build the car at the ex-NSU factory in... Hey Jackie, Jason from Jason Bowman Loves Cars here. Sorry to bother you on your day off. Brian and Mr. G said in the comments, I say Porsche wrong. You mean Borscht like the soup? No, no, the German sports car. Oh, the sports car is pronounced Porsche. Oh, thanks dude. I'll see you on set. Later, bro. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. Or, Shaw. Debuted the 924 in November 1975 at a press event in the harbor at... Savez-vous planter les choux à la mode? In the south of France. The parts bin engineering 924 was inexpensive to build and proved to be very, very profitable. profitable. Poor Shaw. Became one of their best-selling models. An Audi source four-speed manual transmission from a front-wheel drive car was placed in the rear and used as a transaxle. Power came from a VW EA831 2.0-liter i4 engine, which was a variant of the Audi 100 and Volkswagen LT van engine. In 924 form, the engine had a Porsche-designed cylinder head. 924 engines used the Bosch K-Jetronic fuel injection, producing 95 horsepower in North America. Power was increased to 110 horsepower in mid-1977 with the introduction of the catalytic converter, which reduced the need for other power-robbing smog devices. The four-speed manual transmission was the only option in 1976. Later, this was replaced by a five-speed manual unit. An Audi source three-speed automatic was offered halfway through 1977. The brakes were solid disc in the front and drums at the rear. Car and Driver magazine viewed this as a... Car and Driver magazine viewed this setup as a step backward from the 914 standard four-wheel disc brakes. Starting in 1980, an S package became available with four-wheel disc brakes, five stud hubs, and alloys from the 924 Turbo. Standard brakes could also be ordered on the Turbo as a cost-saving measure. Pen the 924 styling. In July 1976, 924s went on sale in America as 1977 models. I kind of felt sorry for the guy in the Porsche 924 television commercial. I'm tired of the beach. Let's do something yeah. else. I'm tired of the snow. Let's do something else. I'm tired of the 
tired of the desert. Let's do something else. Oh, next you'll be getting tired of me. You? Maybe. Your Porsche? Never. His girlfriend was a high-maintenance gold digger. Incremental improvements to the 924s were made with each model year between 1977 and 1985. 924 turbocharged cars received many non-VW source drivetrain parts. When optioned with the M471 disc brake package and 16-inch forged wheels, the car doubled in price from the base model car. The automotive press at the time praised the 924 for its reliability, fuel economy, styling, and handling. For shop quickly realized they needed a higher performance version of the 924 to slot between the 924 and the 911 in their lineup. Through their racing adventures and success of the 1975 911 Turbo, Porsche chose to put a snail on the 924 for 1978. The 924 Turbo was highly praised by the automotive enthusiasts and journalists alike. They loved the supercar-like performance and precise handling, purposeful styling, and German-built quality. Some scorned the turbocharged i4 for its lack of smoothness, but most critics forgave the shortcomings when they factored in the fuel mileage and night and day power increase over the naturally aspirated car. A lot of the info on the internet I've found was period and very dated. Car magazines I've never heard of comparing the 924 Turbo's performance to other cars I've never heard of. I went to 0 to 60 timescom to get a spread that would be more relatable. The 924 Turbo was a rocket ship by 1979 standards. The 924 Turbo was powered by a bespoke VW EA831 2.0-liter I4 engine. The basis of the engine was the same unit used in the naturally aspirated 924, but heavily revised and hand-assembled at the factory in... Stuttgart. The fun boys at... Or Shaw. Revised the crankcase, connecting rods, cylinder head gasket, crankshaft, and installed a new aluminum cylinder head. As with many old-school turbo cars, the compression was lowered all the way down to 7.5 to 1. The turbo used was a KKNK K-26. Platinum tip spark plugs were utilized. With 10 PSI of boost, horsepower increased to 170 horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 181 foot-pounds of torque at 3,500 RPM. Porsche added a NACA duct in the hood to aid cooling and let people know it was a turbo model. Four slotted air vents were added to the badge panel. Ducks were also added to either side of the front valance to help cool the front brakes. 15-inch alloy wheels and four-wheel disc brakes with five-stud hubs and five-speed dogleg shift pattern transmission completed the turbo model's upgrades. Poor shot. 928-style forged 16-inch flat wheels with 924-specific offsets were optional. A ducktail spoiler was fitted to the rear hatch. The spoiler further reduced the drag coefficient from 0.36 to 0.33. The 924 Turbo was able to match the performance of its big brother 928 and come within striking distance of the 911 SC. For 1981, Poor shot. released the 924 Turbo Series 2. A new turbocharger with a larger compressor and smaller turbine running more boost pressure and a slightly higher compression ratio of 8 to 1. Poor shot. Put an improved fuel injection system... system. <clears throat> Poor Shaw. Added an improved fuel injection system and a flywheel triggered digital ignition timing control. The horsepower rose to 177 horsepower. In North America, the 924 Turbo arrived in late 1979 for the 1980 model year. Typically, North America gets the shaft when it comes to cars, and the 924 was no exception. The 924 was carrying extra weight in the form of federally mandated larger bumpers and other safety equipment, and less power due to our tighter emission controls. Power was down 20% to the European model at 143 horsepower for the 1981 model year. Power was bumped to 154 horsepower in 1984. Volkswagen stopped manufacturing the engine blocks used in the 2.0-liter L924, leaving Four, up shit creek without a paddle. The 924 was less expensive than its big brother 944. Dropping the 924 model from their range would have left Poor shot. without an entry-level option. A decision was made to drop in a slightly detuned version of the 944's 163 horsepower 2.5 liter engine. The S also got upgraded suspension and 5 lug wheels and 944 brakes. The result of Porsche's problem-solving efforts was 148 horsepower 1986 924S. 1988 was the 924's final year of production. Horsepower got another bump to 156 horsepower. The bump in power was achieved by using higher compression pistons. The new pistons raised the compression ratio from 9.7 to 1 to 10.2 to 1. The 924S ended up being marginally faster than the base 944 due to its more aerodynamic body and lighter weight. The unfavorable exchange rate of the Duschmart... <laughs> Duschmart, Duschmart. 
the unfavorable exchange rate of the Doshmark mark led poor shot. dropping the 924 and base model 944 from the lineup. Poor decided shot. to focus on their upmarket models. MotorWeek tested the 1987 poor shot. 924S is actually faster than its big brother since it weighs a bit less and has smoother bodywork. Of course, it's only by a few tenths of a second here and there. For the record, we covered the quarter mile in 16 seconds flat with a finish line speed of 86. Aftermarket performance. The aftermarket is still alive and well for the 924. Performance cams, header, catback exhaust, performance suspension parts are in the same boat. Coilovers, sway bars, strut tower braces, racing, drag racing. That 924 took that BMW to Gapplebee's. Hey, wait. That's not supposed to happen. Poor shot. 924s are great for road rallies. Also good for off-road rallies. Nine twenty fours are great for road racing. No doubt both Gavin Johnson and Pip Hammond, as well as the rest of the PDC racing crew, will be watching and cheering on for Jason as they go down the straight. But through goes Philip Waters and now chasing down Ryan Lowry, who I have to say has not made as fast an impact on this race as Rick Styron did. But then Ryan Lowry has not just got a race win to consider. He's also got to consider the fact that he's actually fighting Gavin Johnson. who's not. They're also a natural choice for autocrossing. Perhaps the best use of a 924 is a scenic drive down a country road. Wait, what was that? Holy crap, another jackalope sighting! Nine twenty-four. There are a few things that you need to look out for when buying these cars. Typically, 924s are not known for rust problems, but the tin worm does like to chew on them in a few spots. The first place to look is under the hood, under the battery. Battery boxes and trays are common rust areas in all cars, but since the 924's battery is located at the bottom of the windshield, water also collects there when you factor in the leaves. <gasps> and other debris that can clog the drain hole. The inner fender behind the front wheels is another area where debris can gather, hold moisture, and cause corrosion. A difficult to move driver or passenger seat may be a sign of water in the cabin which leads to floor pan rust. Check the front and rear floor pans for rust. It is also a good idea to look inside the rear hatch and in the spare tire well for moisture or rust. Check the two areas behind the rear wheels on each side for rust or water accumulation as well. Experts agree 924s are pretty mechanically robust. Check for signs of head gasket failure. Listen for any unusual ticking noises and blue smoke coming from the exhaust. The turbocharger is an old school oil cooled unit that was prone to failure if not treated properly. For an idea on value, I chose three models from varying years. Haggerty claims the average value 1978 base 924 to $9,400.
An 82 Turbo is $14,000, and a 1988S is $11,700. The price of these cars is on the rise. Get yours before they become unobtainium. <laughs> like the 911. Thanks for watching my story, the poor Shaw. 924. Hope you enjoyed it.